Hello folks, in today's episode we will learn about setting up authentication for a Gingonic application. We have a simple app that is written in Go. It uses Gin Framework and GORM to interact with the DB. We will add a layer on top of this app to authenticate the user and restrict access to the application. Let's begin with this simple gin based app. This app displays a bunch of blogs in a paginated view. Currently, this page can be accessed by anyone by just hitting the URL. We will add authentication to restrict access to the application. Let us first install a dependency, bcrypt package. This is the package page of bcrypt. This package helps us hash the password and compare the hashed password with the stored password. Let's go to the repository. This repository, Go Cryptography, has many modules. We want only bcrypt. Let's copy this. We just need to append the module name to this path. We already have it installed. In the project, we added templates for sign up and login page. Let's look at the sign up template. It has a form that calls this API using post method. The form has two fields email and password. Here is the email field. This is the password field. And here is the submit button. Now let's go to the login template. This form is similar to the sign up form, it just posts on a different API. Now that the templates are there, let's create APIs that render these templates. The first API has the method get. The root is users slash sign up. The handler function is sign up page. Now we define an API for login. These two GET APIs render the forms to sign up and login. Let's implement these functions. We will create a new controller file, userscontroller.go. The package is controllers. The first function is sign up page. It takes the pointer to the GIN context as a parameter. This function simply renders the HTML template. The status code is OK, which is 200. Render the sign up template. We don't have any data to pass, so we keep this empty. Similarly, we implement the login page handler. Now let's see what these pages look like. This is the sign up page. And this is the login page. Now that the views are ready, let's get to the back end implementation. 
Let's create the user model. Now we define the user struct. Let's add GORM model to add fields like ID, created at, updated at, etc. This model should have a field for email. It is a string. Let's define the GORM attributes. Say the size is 64. Add an index on this column. Another field should be password. Let's define it. Now, add this model to auto-migrate to create the table in the DB. This will create the table users when we run the server next. Now we will implement the APIs on which the sign-up and login forms do HTTP POST calls. This route will be POST. The path is same as this GET API, users slash sign-up. Let's say the handler method is sign-up. This API is used in the sign-up form, here. Similarly, for the login form, we have this API. Let's add a route for this also. Next, we implement these handler functions in the users controller. For sign up and login functions, let's copy the syntax from the previous handlers. The sign up handler function is called when this form is submitted. This form has two fields email and password. We will create a structure to receive this data from the request using GORM's bind function. Let's define a structure called form data. The first field is email, which is a string. In the form, this field is email in lowercase. Similarly, there is a field called password. In the sign up function, create a variable of this structure. Use GORM's bind function to read the fields of the form in data variable. This variable contains these two fields that contain email and password from the form posted on this API. We will hash the password before saving it. Password hashing keeps passwords safe from hackers and makes sure that even if the hackers get the codes, they can't easily figure out the real passwords. It's a way to protect users' private information and build trust. We will use bcrypt for this. To hash the password, generate from password function is used. This function requires the password as bytes as the parameter. Let's put the password. VS Code converts it to bytes automatically. The second parameter is the cost. We will use the default cost.
This function returns a slice of bytes and an error, if any. We take these return values in hashed password and error. If there is an error, return with the status bad request. Next, we create the user. Wait, before that we need to check if the email is already registered. Let's create a function for this purpose in the model, check user availability. This function takes email as the argument and it returns a boolean. Query the table by the email. If user ID is zero, that means the email is not there in the table, hence available. Go back to the sign up handler. If the email is not available, send the status bad request and return. At the end of the function, we create the user. Let's go to the model and implement a function to create a user. This function accepts the email and hashed password. It returns a pointer to the user. Now create a new user entry. Write it to the database. Now return the created user. In the handler function, let's call this function to create the user. Pass the email and the hashed password. Hashed password is converted to string. If the user ID is zero, return with the status bad request. Else we will set the session. We will come to session handling soon. Hashing of the password can be moved to the model function user create to make this code cleaner. Let's move this to user create function. Make changes to this code. If there is an error, return nil.
In the handler function, remove this logic. The returned user could be nil as well. Let's handle this condition also. Now let's implement the login handler. This function reads the same parameters from the form submission. We will copy the parameter reading from the sign up function. Now we need to match the password with the stored password. Again, we will implement this in the modeling. Let's call this function user match password. It takes the email and the password as arguments. And returns the user. First, we fetch the user from the table by the email. If the user is not found, return this empty user. Else, we compare the password with the one stored in the DB. Call B crypt, compare hash and password. This function takes the hashed password from the DB and the password entered by the user. It returns nil if there has been a match. Let's take the return value in a variable, error. If there is an error, return an empty user instance. Else, return the matched user. Now back to the handler function. Call the model function to match the password and get the matched user. If the user ID is zero, return with bad request. Actually, the right HTTP error should be unauthorized. Else, set the session. We will need this package to manage sessions. This is how we get the session. And this is how we get and set the session. This is the way to save it. This command installs the package. Let's install it. We already have this installed. Let's get the session with session's default method. This function takes the context as the argument. 
To set a session value, we can use set method. The first argument is the key and the second is the value. Here we set the user ID in the session. Next, save the session. Now let's copy-paste this code to the sign-up handler also. We don't need this else block as we return from the if statement. Let's remove it. At the end of the sign-up process, on success, we redirect to slash blogs. This will be a temporary redirection. Let's do the same in the login handler. We create APIs to sign up and log in. Now we will create an API to log out. This will be a delete HTTP API. The path is users slash logout. Let's name the handler function logout. Let's implement this function. User's session is maintained in the session. To log out, we simply clear the session values. Get the session. Call clear method to clear all session values. And to save the session. Now on sign up or log in, session is set up. Next, we need a way to intercept the request, validate the session, and handle authorization. In the JIN framework, middleware helps check if someone is allowed to access parts of a website before they actually get there. It acts like a security guard, making sure only people with permission can enter certain areas. We will cover authorization middleware and complete the implementation in the next episode. That wraps up how we set up user authentication in a Gingonic application, ensuring secure password handling and access control. Next time, we'll explore authorization middleware to fine tune user permissions. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tips on secure app development. Happy coding!